Best Man Holiday. One of the best movies I've seen ever. Oh, wow. Ever. That's high I, praise. And I, I don't mean just, you, you must know. like go to a lot of movies. I do. Oh, okay. And I lo like, I love movies. I love all different kinds of movies. And it, it literally made me feel every array of emotions possible mm -hmm. and you completely ruined my chance of looking presentable after I left the theater so <laughs> thank you for that. I apologize. <laughs> um, but how how did you how did you get the inspiration for the characters or where did you get the inspiration for the characters talking like from the beginning? Oh you mean me with yes. the first best man? Yes. Um you know it was really born out of um, this idea this notion that I really wasn't seeing myself represented on screen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, a, in an authentic way. You know, um, whenever there was an educated black person on television or in the movies, they were there, a, a sellout, and they, yeah. they spoke like this, and they were stiff, and you know, you know and, and I was just like, that's not who I am, it's not who the people I went to school with, we're as black as anybody else. You know, and we come from, you know, places where we, we, we have, a, have a choice but to be quote unquote black. Yeah, right. um, and so that didn't speak to me. So, uh, and then there were there were those movies like Way Into Exhale, which just had very archetypal and sometimes stereotypical characters in them, right. especially of men. And I felt like I'm going to write a story that is true to what I know to be. Right. Um, and fortunately, you know, the, the 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 screenplay was the right screenplay at the right time. And you know, because I think it wasn't just me that was craving to see images. Uh, of black people that were fuller, better than than, than what I'd been seeing, but it was a, it was a whole generation of people who was feeling the same way, yeah. and I think that's the reason why the movie that's stands cool. up, yeah. and and is considered a classic by many people. I think so too. And one of the other things that I think made it hold up is the fact that these are characters that you feel like you know, like these are characters that you feel like. Hey, I know someone that's just like, you know, just like her, just like him, or a combination of, of all of them in a lot of ways. And the chemistry between the cast is like, oh, it's, it's phenomenal. You know, we got the right cast. You know, um, they, the, 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 the good thing was that there was a, a lot of enthusiasm from the acting community to be in The Best Man. Mm -hmm. um, again, because, you know, black actors are actors like anybody else. Yeah. They, they, they study their craft. They have a passion for, for embodying other characters, mm -hmm. and they rarely get to play that. They get to be the sidekick, or they get to be right. the best friend, or it's they really get to small. be like the hood, or yeah. they get to be a pimp, or they get to be a whore. It's just like it was limiting, for, you know, limited, limiting for them to, um, you know, to not really be able to express themselves as fully formed characters. So when they all came in, they were all hungry, and they were all kind of in. You know, pretty much the same level of stardom. Um, either they needed a, a, a career boost or they were just starting out or and some of them you know were already like kind of firmly established. So you know it, there was a, a real desire to make it special and then I think that, I think that was all those reasons are, 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 are reasons why uh, we all came back together and, and, and decided to do another one. Did you know right away when you were casting like that this person was perfect? I mean, because I feel like the casting was done so well that I can't even see anybody else playing these characters. You know, you know, it's funny. Uh, the, the, there's some that um, you know you knew right away. Others had I I I, I wasn't sure about. Okay. You know, and I had other people in mind. Um, you know, I can't see anyone else today. Yeah. You know, and even certainly back then when we made the movie, there wouldn't have been anybody better. You know, so um, it just kind of worked, and you know, we were lucky in that in that regard. That the people who were available for the for the roles and who wanted to play the roles were were the right people, and we got them at the right time in their career. Yeah, we really see the characters' growth in in this this one, um, and you did something that I find that a lot of people don't or can't execute as well in sequence, which is you really gave us backstory. So then you, you understand these characters that you fell in love with the first time around, but now you really understand kind of why they are the way they are. As a writer, was that something that was a challenge for you to do? You know, I, I try to write this as fully formed characters as possible, you know, this and, and there's always, you know, stuff that I'm gonna leave out because the movie can't sustain it. Right. Um, and so I knew I wanted the, the, the characters to evolve. I knew I wanted them to have growth. Um, 
and not all of it had to be explicitly drawn out, right. you know, on the on the page. You know, like I remember Terrence Howard would say, "Man, well, this they have growth, and Harper has growth, and Lance has growth. Where's Quentin's growth? What is?" I said, "You have growth." He did. But because you are, you you, you never would have done certain the certain the certain things you would have done that you had done in this movie that you would have done in the first movie. Yeah. You just wouldn't have done those things. He didn't quite see it that way until he saw the movie. Yeah. It was like. I, f I felt like his heart grew. Like he was like the Absolutely. Little grinch. Like his heart grew. His heart grew, <laughs> and trying. like he got to be much more mature. And like you know, he was still kind of the guy that like you know messed around and pushed buttons and stuff. Absolutely. But you know, he was still Quentin. But at the same time, he had you know some sympathy on his side. You know, the, you know, he's a he's a caring individual. Yeah, you, I think you saw that a lot more in this one, and he was one of the reasons that I laughed so much in the film. I mean, there were non-stop laughs, but I have to talk about the scene that made me laugh the hardest because it made me think of a time that I was in the car with my dad and um, If It Isn't Love by New Edition came on and mm -hmm. we were stuck in traffic and I just started breaking out the moves and people were riding by and they're cracking up. So then when I saw the movie and the Can You Stand the Rain scene, like I was just in tears. How did you come up with the notion, like, I need to put this in the film? You know, it's, there was two, there's two kind of, um, uh, inspirations behind it. One, you know, for those who, who may or may not know, you know the, one of the biggest inspirations for the original Best Man was the movie The Big Chill. Okay. And this this movie is is is, is also that, um, and is uh, and a probably a little bit closer version to The Big Chill than the first one was. And I uh, there's a scene in there uh, where the the characters, you know, Glenn Close, uh, Kevin Klein, John Hurt. Um, they're putting away dishes, and they're they're doing it to the Temptations. Ain't too proud to beg. <laughs> Dancing and like you know, and uh, they're singing with each other, and 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 they're all involved. It's a fun scene, and one that was kind of emblematic of that movie. And I say, well, I want to do a, you know something similar after one of our meals. And then the other thing was, and when I, I went to school at, at Georgetown University, and we would have lip syncing contests. <laughs> Uh, so that we, we got that got judged and people you know people love those kind of things they love karaoke yeah. they, so you know I thought it would be a fun thing to do um, and again for Mia it was Mia's desire for everyone to come together right. she's the reason everyone is, is has come together for this weekend and you know we reveal later on like you know why she did it um, and uh, you know uh, when when we you know when, when I when I when we did it I uh, and I was and I I picked that song. A because it's a great song, it is. Um, and B because it's kind of thematic to the movie, yeah. um, in a in a kind of a subtle way, uh, as well as uh, I, I knew that it, would, it could be a potential showstopper. <laughs> and that it was. Yeah, you know, so I got the you know best choreographer in the business, Jamal Sims, okay. to uh, come in and you know be a part of it. I was, was going to ask, were you guys watching the old new edition? No, 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 no. I got, I got, I got, I got you all. And if you if you've seen any dance movie in the past, you know, seven, ten years, he's been a part of it. Okay. You know, he is the one of the dopest choreographers out there. And I couldn't pay him a lot of money. I was just like, Jamal, I need, I need you to do this, man. He did, he worked on um, Soul Men with me. Okay. And he was like, Yo, I'm down. And uh, you know the guys. <laughs> it worked really, really hard, you know, and 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 not a lot of time to uh, prepare for it. Okay. So they were, um, I'm very proud of them, they, and they were very excited to um, get those moves down. It's it's really cute to watch them, you know, rehearse it and say, "Oh man, I got to go oh, nowhere." <laughs> I, I hit that that that, that right, that right. and they, they 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 did it. They really did it. They they did indeed, and I think you did a great job in, in balancing the humor and then you know the parts that tug at your heart because it almost felt like you could get gut punched with you know, some, some truth and some real life, and mm -hmm. then there was the comedy, which is life, you know. That's stuff right. Happens, That's exactly how I feel. And you and, you know, then you're smiling about the same stuff that made you cry. And one of the things that you, you dealt with, or the film dealt with, was health. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually had a health scare earlier this year, and I saw how it affected all of my relationships. And now with everything that's happening with the Affordable Care Act, it's like perfect timing. But what made you want to kind of like implement that idea and notion of health into the film? Again, it was it was more uh, a, a question of you know not even a question, but it's 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 the things that we're dealing with in, as we get older, you know, um, the things that that affect us uh, and affect families and affect friends, um, you know, and I, I wanted to deal with that, and it was it was a, a lot of it had to do with um, working on Lance's or having 
Lance to have a challenge with his faith, you know, his belief in God, and um, and also Harper's. You know, I wanted that that, that to be a question because sometimes um, faith is all people have. Yeah. And sometimes prayer works, and sometimes it doesn't it, work. It, the, the, you the, the, the prayer the prayers aren't answered. Right. That's life. That's real life. Yeah. Um, speaking of real life. I'm, I'm a very visual person, so I was like writing and taking notes and thinking about all these characters and mm. how they're all related. And I actually found myself drawing triangles of all the love triangles that happen in this film. You know, Harper and, and Mia and Lance, and then it's Harper and Robin. And it, like, it's all these love triangles. And then yeah. I started thinking about real life and how sometimes these relationships in real life are just messy. Um, but. They're real, so yes. it's like—is that one of the things you wanted us as the audience to see that even these messy relationships are worth salvaging? Well, I think you know, in 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 trying to bring all the tension to the forefront, whether it was sexual, emotional, dramatic tension, I wanted it to be out there. But then by the end of the movie, realize the bigger picture. Yeah. You know, we all need each other. Uh, we need to put the petty BS aside yeah. and really acknowledge what's important in our lives and it's not about material things and it's not about um, you know holding on to grudges and it's about being there for one another and putting all the petty stuff aside and, and, and trying to just you know move forward with your, with your life without without you know holding on to certain things and uh, speaking of themes of, of three one of the things that I saw in the film that touched me personally were the themes of like frailty, forgiveness, and faith, like what we just talked about. And then with Lance, it was his three, which was God, family, and football. Yeah. What would the three things that you think you could put yourself, if you had to put yourself in three words, in the essence of what makes you you, what would you say those three words would be? Um, perseverance, endurance, integrity. I might even say, I'd probably throw humor in there too somewhere. In that order? Or it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I, I suppose. Okay. Um, if you could put the movie into three words, what would it be? Soulful. Well, I'll say soul, love, friendship. I think that's it up pretty well. And I have to ask. Yes. Is there going to be a best man three? Because you left the window open. Oh